Agriculture's Pavilion in Davos. Really pleased to be joined by Neil Dunn, Chief Sustainability Officer for BT. Now, Hi, ET. hello. <laughs> Tell me about the intersection between sustainability and technology. Well, I just think this is so in sync with the fourth industrial revolution because really the convergence of technology, so bringing together 4G, Wi-Fi, broadband, all of that network convergence is allowing us to connect people uh, more than they've ever been connected before, um, but also connect things more than they've ever been connected before. And really that gives us phenomenal opportunities to allow us to uh, not just innovate, but I think also innovate in a way that allows us to be much more resourcefulness um, and to um, start to encourage people through digital means uh, to be more in sync with their values, to be more in sync with the way they want to live um, and ultimately to try and you know, utilize um, that, that insight and that data uh, really to start um, creating the, the rise of the, the sharing economy, the circular economy, um, and all those you know, much more resource intensive business models, um, I think is going to be you know, a fantastic, um, um, exciting time over the next you know, five to 10 years. Tell me more about that idea of the sharing economy, the circular economy, and how, what BT is involved in. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, the sharing economy is as we're connecting people, you're creating networks, and you're connecting um, people socially through communities, but you're also connecting things. So the first thing that happens there is people start to look at uh, resources they haven't been using previously. It could be a house, uh, it could be a, a car, could be um, a driveway, could, could be, be a, your pet, could be a driveway, could even be your wife. Um, <laughs> and you, you know, you, you just, you know, you, you see that there's markets for all of those things. Um, maybe not for your wife, but for certainly all the other things. You know, you can you can um, introduce them uh, to to people who are willing to pay a price for that. And I think uh, another thing that's 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 really exciting is um, you know the rise of the circular economy, where I think on the back of digital, we're now really able to understand people's values, um, you know, what they care about, do they want local sourcing, do they want something to be seasonal, um, you know, do they, do they actually want to drive an electric vehicle as opposed to internal combustion engine, and really use uh, AI to actually um, choice edit and provide those people with choices that actually allow them to really uh, be in sync with their values when they're making purchasing decisions. But then of course, because we've got that relationship um, with the customer that we didn't have previously, um, we can also then encourage them to bring back because that's the thing that you know is, is a, a fundamental enabler of the circular economy is incentivizing people to return stuff when they're finished with it. So really we're a great enabler of all of that on the back of our on the back of our technology as it relates to the connected home, the connected car, more connected businesses all around the world. I'm hearing a lot about the Internet of Things, however my refrigerator still doesn't order my milk for me. How soon is that kind of... Do you talk to your refrigerator? <laughs> Only when it's out of milk, which is pretty much every other day. We have an app for that. <laughs> but how, much, how, how soon is that going to be actually a reality for most of us in the UK, for Well, example? look, I think it's happening now. I think the Internet of Things is happening now, but the challenge is it's not happening at scale. So I think everybody's playing about it with, in their own discrete swim lanes. And I think until we actually get to you know, um, um, a much more disruptive approach where we agree you know, bringing in a couple of partners, sharing the data, sharing the standards, looking at what's working, uh, sharing insight around you know, how people like stuff to be connected, what works effectively, functionally and non-functionally, uh, and really learning from all of that and kind of almost having a whole ecosystem around the home innovating into that space. There's very few organizations who are the kingmakers in all of that. You could certainly look to a Google, Google or an Apple, but also a telecommunications company like BT. We've got a centrifugal place in the middle of the home through uh, our broadband connection, incredible data on the back of that as well, uh, and ability to connect things as, as, as well. We're also acquiring a, a, a a mobile network, uh, mm -hmm. 4G in mm -hmm. the UK, um, and that's going to allow us, you know, not just to be limited to the home, but to also be with people when they're travelling uh, all around the UK as well. Thank you very much, Neil, for stopping by yeah. the Hub Culture Pavilion Pleasure. here in Dallas, and I'm Edie Lush.